So welcome everyone to this pretty interesting series of video podcasts. We have a few episodes here and the discussion today is loosely based on how do you choose a catamaran? Now there are a million different ways you can choose uh, a new vessel for yourself or a used vessel for yourself but intrinsically a lot of people just buy a boat because they like the look of it or they have a dream that they want to fulfill but scratch the surface and you will find that no two boats are the same and there is a huge discrepancy between the quality of one boat versus the quality of another boat or the performance of one boat against the quality of another boat so how do you define the two and to answer that question, we have Antoine Richer here to discuss this with us. Now, I'm going to let Antoine introduce himself in a minute. But just to put you through this, Antoine is one of the naval architects at Corsair Marine, also Sea Wind Catarans. And they, as you know, are building for us the Sea Wind 1370 Rubio's 2. But Antoine, he has a degree in naval architecture from uh, Saint-Nazaire. He has a master's in naval architecture. So he's pretty well qualified to discuss all these points. So Antoine, thank you for giving it your time for us. How are you today, sir? Pretty excited to uh, talk about naval architecture. And um, so, yeah, working at Corsair and Sirene for uh, two years now. I've been working in the boat construction and naval architecture for now five, six years. Um, and um, I've been working, I think, in, in the catamaran, mostly. Um, and uh, the new project coming, uh, something re I'm really excited about. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you, you and me both, my friends. So, I, again, for those people that are watching this, this is going to be a pretty in-depth dive into aspects of just naval architecture and we've had some chats already over the last couple of weeks and I'm very impressed at how you can kind of simplify things and certain concepts that even that uh, even people averse with shipbuilding are complicated so thank you for you know managing to put this across in such a, a, an easy way to interpret. The first question which is to do really with hull shape we hear and read so much about the shape of hulls of a catamaran and how they work with performance so the question is when you are discussing the importance of the beam of each hull at the waterline how important that is that compared to the length so what we're talking about in a nutshell is the importance of that ratio of length to to beam in a hull Yes, so really, the, the beam is important if you're looking uh, for a performance catamaran. Um, it's not that important if you are choosing a cruising catamaran. Uh, what I would say, and there is, no, uh, there is no bad design, but design that answers um, different needs. Um, but definitely, if you are looking for a performance catamaran, the, um, the ratio length beam is important. Um, and uh, it can clearly make the differentiation between a performance and a cruising catamaran. So basically you are looking, I mean, this is to, the, to us as, as lay people, that the narrower the hull, the, the greater the performance, but obviously you lose interior volume. So the ratios that you're talking about, there's obviously a, an optimum ratio um, from a naval architecture point of view from, of length to, to beam. Now, can you run through us with that with us? So yeah, so you have the ratio length uh, beam, but you also have the ratio of uh, beam to hull depth, because you can have a high displacement boat, narrow hull, but very deep hull, and that is not good at all. Um, so you have to keep this ratio, the beam length, and also um, depth of the hull. Um, so if you have a lar large beam, high beam, you will be also uh, you will have also a deep hull, and if you have narrow hull, you will have a quite shallow hull. So the ratio length beam is also linked to the depth beam. Okay. Um, so just to clarify, so when you say depth, that is the amount of of, of material and the amount of hull below the waterline. Exactly. Yeah. And I am um, just to clarify again from our understanding, the more 
you have below the waterline, the, the more drag and friction you're creating as you try and pass a boat through the water. So that um, obviously corresponds to a loss of performance. Exactly. Both the beam and uh, the depth will, uh, will, uh, um, will make the, the drag or... Yep. Yeah. So it's to do um, with drag. So basically what you're trying to do is reduce drag. And I'm assuming that mm -hmm. obviously the wider the hull, the, the higher the boat will sit in the water. So that seems to be a ratio that you've got to get absolutely right between not having the boat sitting too low in the water because um, it's too narrow mm -hmm. and not having the boat sitting on top of the water but having so much drag from a wide hull. Is that correct? Yeah, it's correct. Um, for a cruising catamaran, you will have a large and a deep hull, but so you will move more water, uh, you will have more weighted surface area, and the, the half entry angle of the water will be quite open, um, and so you have more drag and your, your boat end up to be slower. But you have more comfort, more uh, floor width, uh, more head height, so, um, and uh, against that, so you have the narrow and shallow hull, um, you will displace less water. Um, yes. And uh, you will be, uh, so you have to have a lighter boat. Uh, um. so, uh, so basically, um, let me just run through a couple of things. So firstly, the actual physical dimensions of this. So what you're saying, I mean, this is to me that the actual basic physics of it, that if you want interior volume, you have to create mm. that space and that ultimately reduces performance. But there are yeah. ratios that we have talked about before about, you know, what the ratio, what the ideal ratios are, because this isn't just based on the art of it all. There's 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 phys there's physics in the fluid dynamics and, and, and the naval architecture. So for those people that really want to deep dive into these sort of statistics, what are the ratios that you should be aiming for for a performance hull? So we can look at the numbers. You have the um, slenderness ratio. So if people want to really uh, go deep in that, they can have a look at the slenderness ratio. It takes in account the whole volume and uh, by the lengths. The, so the displacement by the wa waterline lengths. And it's, it should be above seven for uh, performance, uh, performance um, yeah, catamaran. The displacement divided by the length, that gives you a ratio and that should be above seven. Yeah. So in a say a, a cruising catamaran, that dis, that ratio, the slenderness ratio, drops uh, obviously as as the kind of the 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 the, the volume increases. So say for, I mean you obviously we're not just discussing Seawin here. We're also discussing other brands and other marks of catamaran. How low can that ratio drop to in in a modern catamaran today? If you're looking say at a more voluminous cruising catamaran can drop as low as four, I'd say. And say you're, so you're looking at something like four for the sort of like the big beamy kind of wallowing around, you know, con, you know, the floating apartments that people cruelly call some kind of. And then if you took like the AC-72s that go and do, you know, the old uh, for the previous um, America's Cup, th their, their ratio is going to be like way above seven, isn't it? I mean, you're looking probably, I mean, they're foiling. So that ratio then goes up to... Yeah, they're falling, so there will be the part of, uh, yeah, <laughs> no. that's a completely yeah, but, different... And, and uh, I suppose, <laughs> but that's easy to visualise because different. obviously we're talking a lot about drag and it's difficult to visualise drag. I mean, I know that you've got a lot of computer modelling, but for people that watch those catamarans zipping around those circuits, you know, they are trying to reduce drag by getting, literally lifting the boat, creating, you know, a vertical lift. And that's probably easier for, for me to visualise how you are trying to kind of reduce the drag in, in a different way. Okay, so that's the slenderness ratio, which um, is obviously something that is built into a formula. What other ratios do you take into account when designing a hull? Yes, yeah, so you have, um, it's not a ratio, but it's a coefficient, and it's called the prismatic co coefficient. And um, so I think we can show a, a, like an image to, show, to explain, but it measures the fullness of the hull. And the higher, the better for, um, for a performance cruiser. So prismatic coefficient, the higher, the better. Okay. 
So you won't find any uh, prismatic coefficient in the data sheet of, uh, on the market, but um, you can uh, try to ask the novel architect. Uh, do you know what? I am just because I'm going to go at this guerrilla style. I want everyone listening to this uh, podcast, this video cast, to go when they are going to look <laughs> at their boats and go and ask the dealer at Miami or Annapolis or Southampton and say, what's the prismatic coefficient of this hull? Nick and Antoine ask and just see everyone's blank faces. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who, because I mean, look, the, the, the point is, I mean, joking aside, these are really important things because, you know, we have seen so many statistics about, oh, this boat can do these not th this speed. It can it can work at you know this ratio but the, the, you know it doesn't often translate into people understanding why it works that way and you know there's mm -hmm. so much that you don't get told and honestly i believe that the more information people have not just in boat design but in anything if you're given the information you can make a better choice so these mm -hmm. things are important and it does and has frustrated me for years that so little information is available i would rather honestly go to a broker and someone tell me the slenderness ratio of the hull than tell me how many different types of fabric I can get put into the saloon. That's just me. So, okay. So mm. we've got slenderness ratio. We've got prismatic coefficient and how that affects um, performance. What else do you want to talk about? What else, what other factors are we looking at when we're designing a hull? Um you can uh, have a look at the distance between the hull center line. The higher, the better, again, because um, each hull creates wave, and when the two waves meet, it's create like a higher wave, and um, those two waves can hit the bridge deck, and uh, they cr it's create more drag. Um, so the distance between opposite hulls, so you've got two hulls, it's the distance the, and so yeah. the, the, the higher the exactly. distance between those two holes, the, the more area between there is to dissipate waves that come down okay, uh, yeah. under the bridge deck. Yeah, less interference, yeah. Okay, um, so I suppose what that then leads to is that the wider the, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, we'll, and we'll talk about this again, you know, the, you, the wider that the holes are apart, you are also then have to work something in it to bridge deck clearance, otherwise the boat will sit very, very low. You can't just stretch a boat out otherwise you know that that's not going to work but we'll cover the bridge deck clearance because it's the bridge deck clearance is one that incenses me because so many people ask oh what about bridge deck clearance on this catamaran but it is such a complicated thing you can't to the best of my knowledge just put a number on it and say well this has got an extra couple of inches it's going to be better mm. okay so slenderness ratio prismatic coefficient distance between the hulls the inter hull distance anything else shape shape of the hull like shape the shape of the rockers uh, is it flat is it flat rocker from the from the bow to the transom uh, is it really curved um, you have the immersed transom the amount of transom below the waterline um, um, are the section are half circle section or are they flat flat section um, all these kind of things so what the flat section mean for example if you have a flat section it can create your lift vertical dynamic lift um, but so it's more for performance cruiser um, you you don't really see a flat section on a on a uh, charter catamaran because that's not the best um, that's not the best um, shape to, to have the less weighted surface area. So when you say flat section, you mean if you take a, the cross section of a hull, it's actually flat at the, yeah, so a cross section. Yeah, not longitudinal, yes. Like a performance cruiser would have like a U shape. Yes. And um, charter catamaran, it's uh, much more rounded, more, much more curved. Okay, so the flat section increases performance exactly how? Is that just an additional lift or wetted surface? How does that work? Yeah, so uh, for the wetted surface, it's, um, it's, it's, not, it's not the best compared to the, to the rounded section, but it does create a vertical dynamic lift. Uh, it helps to, when, when you get speed, the, the whole hull is, is lifted. Okay, so interesting. And can so, increase the writing moment. 
The writing, okay. So interesting, so for the point of view of people looking to buy any catamaran, you know, you really do then need to take a look at, at, cross se at hull cross sections, you know, not just the glitzy and the, you know, the nice glossy picture of the final render. And I think it's important that you look at that because again, as I keep saying, we've seen so many statistics on this catamaran can perform, you know, at this speed, but really then you look, you compare that to say the cross section of a hull and the two don't add up. And again, I was completely unaware of this. I know that our current boat, Ruby Rose, has a flat bottom to her. And I always thought that mm -hmm. was just to let her dry out, but monohulls, it, monohulls are different. It's not a lift thing. But I didn't realize that actually having a flat, a flatter bottom to a, a, a hull made it, um, you know, increases its performance, but that does make sense. So, okay, so again, and you know, you talk about rocker. The only thing I really understand about, you know, the term rocker, which essentially to, to my understanding is the, the curve at the, at the front edge of the, uh, you know, at the front of the hull. Um, the the kind of the way it curves up, is that that's correct? Yeah, know? that's the rocker is so longitudinal view. Yes, it's the curve, the keel line basically, uh, from the transom to the bow. Okay, the rocker. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, I know I know that from spending hour after hour after hour after hour in my father-in-law's friend's shed discussing surfboard rockers. So you know that that I do turn, but I, again, I do know that you know the, from a surfing point of view. The, the shape of the rocket is super important for performance. And so this obviously is translated again into, into, into keel design for, for Cataran. So is it, I mean, it must be pretty complicated. If you're talking about the curve that goes from, from, from transom to, to the bow, that's a, that's a pretty, you know, that, that, getting that curve right, it's gonna be pretty difficult, isn't it? Experience. <laughs> okay, there you go. A very French answer. You know, <laughs> long question, one word answer. Antoine, thank you for that bit. Okay, so we've got rocker. Anything else? Um, or is that, uh, do all those factors kind of give you the shape that you're happy with? That's um, the most, the more important factor. And usually we, we can play with them if, um, for what we are trying to achieve. Okay, you put more rocker, more immersed transom, you change the section, you play with all this factor, and then you arrive at your, at your final uh, hull shape. Uh, but again, I think there is, no, there is no bad design, but design that answers different, different needs. Um, yeah. So, the f I've just got a, a question which springs to mind is that most people when you see on catamaran sailing forums is that the boat sits too low in the water because you've put too much stuff on it and so i know that a lot of these figures come out um you know based on an unladen boat but what does happen if a boat sits too low in the water i mean if you've overloaded it past its it's the capacity that it's designed for yeah so um usually we design as another architect i design a boat um, so to a drawing, we call this a DWL, the drawing waterline. And, yeah. um, and the drawing waterline is about for, let's say for 40 foot, um, it's two ton less than the light ship. So when the boat leaves the factory, it's two ton lighter than the drawing waterline. Yes. Um, so when, you f when the tank are full, four people on, uh, on a boat, uh, full charge, then now you are the drawing waterline. And that's the um, optimum design, the optimum performance. Uh, um, but if, if you load the boat too much, the hull shape is, is not designed for that. So you will lose performance, you will lose comfort, uh, the bridge deck will sit uh, too low, uh, you will have slamming problem, uh, lot of, of issue. So what we've heard about, I mean, this is our take on it. With a monohull, you can load the boat and you load the boat and the more you load it, you do lose performance gradually. But what we've heard about mm. Catarans is that there's kind of like a, a point of which you load it, you get a, a significant drop of performance. What, because Catarans don't sit in the water, they sit on the water. So there is a tipping point with loading that we've heard um, where you, all of a sudden, your, your performance just drops massively. That's correct, is it? Yeah, that's correct. Um, because you, you, you lose your ratio, the ratio we talked. Like yes. The, the, you get now a narrow hull, 
and a deep. Uh, ah, deep ah okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So, yeah, so the ratios of everything that we've discussed, so the slenderness ratio, the prismatic coefficient, are all because we're talking about wetted surface. It changes. Mm -hmm. Okay, th okay, that makes okay. sense. Antoine, that is brilliant. So that concludes part one of this video vlog. Again, there's going to be a few more of these vlogs, so stay tuned if you want to um, find the next one. Again, thank you so much to Antoine. We'll be back again with another video detailing more in-depth questions about catamaran design. So thank you so much for watching this. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, there's a little button down there, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. And join us for the next in the series on Casaran Design, where we discuss other topics such as bridge deck clearance, do we really need dagger boards, and most importantly, what is your Cataran actually built of? There are so many different ways of building a boat, and like the ingredients in a cake, you want to know what you've got before you buy. So join us next time.